Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts with me, Phil Bars, and here we have our UK Open preview in association with Labrooks. We are off to Butlin's Minehead again for the FA Cup of Darts. It's back, the first televised ranking title of the year, the UK Open. Everyone loves the UK Open. It's fast, it's frantic, we've got eight boards on the go. Players have to play up to four times on the first day, some of them if they want to go deep in this tournament. It's just an unbelievable spectacle of darts. Everyone loves it. You can go and watch the outer boards. You've got board two, which is a um, stream board. You've got the main stage. It's just darts everywhere over the next weekend at Butlin's Minehead. It's one of the prestigious tournaments. It's one that everyone wants to win. And it's got that unique feel to it because you've got the Riley's qualifiers playing in it. You've got the top pros. So all the amateur players that have tried to qualify through Riley's, dreams could come true. They could play Michael Van Gogh in, on the main stage, on TV, from just going to a local qualifier. It, it's just a great um, spectacle for darts, as I've said earlier. So... The big news is Gary Anderson is fit to try and defend his UK Open crown. We all know the Flying Scotsman has been a huge doubt for the UK Open because of the long-standing back problem. He had to pull out the Premier League because of it, but news broke yesterday that he is fit to try and defend his title, which is great news for darts. A surprising stat as well, that many of you probably know this, but Michael Van Gogh hasn't won this tournament for the last two years. Peter Wright and then Gary Anderson have both taken his crown. Speaking to him in Dublin at the Premier League, he's well aware of this and he wants that crown back. No, there's no question about this whatsoever. As he said, he goes, no, I'm not defending much here this time, so I can go and enjoy it. Where the pressure is, he's normally defending him a lot of money. He's not this year, so Michael Van Gogh will be a huge danger because he didn't play two years ago because of a back problem as well. What is it about the UK Open and back problems? We all seem to be talking about them. But that, that's great news. The prize money has also gone up this year. It's 100k for the winner. They're trying to up the prize money in all the other tournaments to bring them in line with the World Championships because the prize money at the Worlds is so far stacked for players. Now it can affect the rankings massively. So I like they're trying to bring the prize money up into contention with everything else. But like we said, the eight boards are dotted around the um, one of the arenas in Butlins, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but there's some great drama out there. The seeds, they get the hump. They might, they say they don't, but if they're not on the stage, the main stage, or maybe even stage two, they're a, they're they're in danger on those outside boards, no question whatsoever, because it's like a pro tour event, and we all see on the pro tour. There's shocks all over the place. It's not the usual winners. So if you're a seed, you don't want to be drawn on one of those outside boards. That's for sure. The top players don't enter the action until Friday night, but they've earned that right uh, to have a couple of rounds. Buys, if you want to call them. A bit like the FA Cup in football. The Premier League teams don't come in until round three. It's the same here. Everyone, they've, they've earned that right not to play in the um, opening couple of rounds because where they are in the rankings. But... I absolutely can't wait for this year's UK Open because, like we say, it's one of the best tournaments on the calendar and it's so early in the year, it's great. Remember, the unique thing about the UK Open as well is the draw is done after each round. The first three are all done and can be seen on the Live Darts website, but after that, drawn out of a hat. There's no, there's no seedings. You can't hide from anyone. So we could have Gary Anderson against Michael Van Gogh in, in round four. What a blockbuster game that would be. But not just that, all the other players would be like, yes, one of the big buns is going out. So the UK Open is great for that. The draw makes it as well because fans are hanging on the edge of their seat. You have players milling around backstage looking, oh, who am I going to get then? So the UK Open is just a unique atmosphere for darts. Right, we're now going to take you through the runners and riders in the outright market. All odds are with title sponsors, Labrooks. And remember, we can't give you everyone because we'd be here all night, but we've picked out the, the top ones and then a few to watch a little bit of value down the order. First up, can't look past the world number one and world champion, Michael Van Gogh, but he's five to six with the bookies right now. Is he too short? Yes, probably. Will he win? Yes, I think he will. Just because he's just in far better form than anyone else right now on TV. But at that price, I can't back him outright to win at this at that price, but I think he will win, uh, win the title. Next up, the returning Gary Anderson, eight to one, straight in as second favourite. But how fit is Gary? How much has he played? Is that going to play a part? 
questions that we don't know the answers to right now. They'll get answered in due course. We will know a fit Gary Anderson can beat anyone. But it's a long time out for him. First tournament back, how much prep times he had, we, we shall see in the coming days. But Gary Anderson, 8-1 to one with Labrooks. From there, Michael Smith, 10-1. to one. We're all saying it's only a matter of time until Bully Boy wins one of the televised titles. Will he win this one? He's certainly got a chance if the draw goes right. So 10 to 1 represents decent value for Michael Smith. From there, Rob Cross, 12 to 1. We're starting to see glimmers of the best of Rob Cross, like we predicted we would. The monkey's off his back. He likes the UK Open. He's had good runs here before. So Rob Cross, 12 to 1. Again, if the draw goes right, could represent some good value for your punters this week. From there, the Iceman, Gerwin Price. I really like this bet. 22 to 1 right now with Labrooks. The Iceman, in the form of his life right now. He won the Slam last year. Then he disappointed, but he's bounced back. Premier League unbeaten. Banging in averages for fun. Back-to-back -back Pro Tour wins in Barnsley. You certainly wouldn't write Gezi Price off. And if you draw him, you must be thinking, oh, what have I done to deserve that? <clears throat> Um, like I said in our Premier League preview, the second best player on Planet Darts right now. 22 to 1, an each way shout for me for Gezi Price. 25 to 1, Adrian Lewis and Glenn Durham. Adrian starting to show glimpses of the back to back World Championship form at the weekend, had decent Pro Tour runs. So, AD, a danger. But does a what a start to the, Premier League, um, to the PDC career he's had. Yes, he did play in the Premier League, but he's won a Pro Tour event. He's gone deep in Pro Tours. He's played in the Premier League in Glasgow, straight in 25 to 1. That's very short for someone that's ranked where, you're, where he is. But we all know the outstanding quality Glenn Durrant has. And again, he needs a little bit of luck with the draw, but 25 to 1 each way, you certainly wouldn't back against Daza, the form he's in right now. Now, from there, we're going to go have a look at Chris Doby, 66 to 1. Again, Doby had a good world. He pushed Gary Anderson to the absolute limit. His Pro Tour form has been a, a bit patchy, but he, he had a decent run at the weekend to the last 16, I think it was. But more importantly, he showed how good he is on TV in the Premier League when he played in Newcastle. So, 66 to 1. I like the look of Doby for an each way bet. Now, from there, the rank outsider, if you win and have a long punt, Jamie Hughes, 300 to 1. Yozza finally got his tour card this year after missing out, but it's the big averages he's been posting at Q School, 309 plus averages on the spin. This year on the Pro Tour, again, posting some monster averages. He will need a little bit of luck with the draw, but if Yozza's in the mood, 300 to 1 seems a monster price if you want a big each way bet for the Labrooks UK Open. Now I've picked out four first round games for you to keep an eye on. Again, I can't preview them all because there's just so many, but I've just picked four of the first round games that start at 11 o'clock on Friday on the outside boards. Um, as I say, the big guns don't come in until Friday evening. Don't worry, we will have a preview for every session from the venue as I'm there covering it for live darts. But this is just our four to watch in the first round. First up, Sean Fox against the wily old Andy Jenkins. I'm sure we've seen it on Twitter. Hashtag Jenks is back. Jenks 3-10 to against the 5-2 to Fox. Jenks, it's good to see him back. He's a former world semi-finalist, but lost his way a little bit. But he won a Riley's qualifier, and he's always good value, Jenks. So that'll be a great game to watch on one of the outside boards. This next one really could be the tie of the first round. We've got Mark McGinney against Dave Pallett. Uh, Mark McGinley, a slight favourite, eight to eleven against eleven to ten for Pallet. Both great experience. Uh, Mark stepped over from the BDO, posted some big averages at Q School. Again, Dave Pallet has shocked many people at the UK Open, so that is a real first round game to watch for me. Next one, we spoke about him earlier on. It's Jamie Hughes against Callum Rids. Uh, Jamie one to seven, so he is very short against Callum, but. I think the young man from the north northeast is better than those odds suggest. I think Hughes will just get over the line, but the young man has no fear. Again, he went and won a Riley's qualifier after not qualifying for it outright. So this will be a really good game, and it will test uh, Jamie Hughes very early on in this. If he can get through that, it should set him up to, to go deep. 
Next one, we've got Always Newton against Cameron Menzies. Former uh, Premier League participant, former PDC star as he was back then. Wes Newton, four on the hard times, but he dragged himself out of the gutter to qualify for this from O'Reilly's event against the Box of Frogs, Cameron Menzies. Uh, Menzies, we all know, his A game, when he's on it, he's untouchable at times, as we've seen on the Challenge Tour, but it's the, the highs and lows, it's like a roller coaster. We never know what's coming from the Scotsman. He's a 4-9 to favourite against 7-4 to Newton. If uh, Menzies plays well, I think he wins. But if he's not on it, then Newton could steal the show and maybe rekindle his career. That's our four games to watch. Like I said, we can't preview them all, but we will have some session previews from the venue coming up. Right, in the comments, let us know who are you looking forward to seeing in the UK Open. I will be in and around both um, the main board venue, board two, and the outer boards. Come and say hi, come and have a chat. Who are you looking forward to, to seeing in this year's UK Open? Remember, follow us at Live Darts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Everything you need for the UK Open as it happens across the weekend at Butlins Minehead for the Festival of Darts. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all soon.